Hi Seahawks, it's me, Mrs. Deshane. I hope you guys are having a great week. I'm so excited that it's Halloween week this week. I love dressing up, as you may have guessed. Um, something that's gonna happen a couple days after Halloween is a traditional Mexican celebration called Day of the Dead or Dia de los Muertos. And we are gonna be getting into that this week so you guys know all about it. Some of you might have seen this amazing movie called Coco. It's one of my absolute favorites and it makes me cry, but I, it makes me happy cry. Um, and uh, we're gonna be reading that. So afterwards, make sure you have your little packet that you got in your box this week with some colored paper and your little skeleton guy. We're gonna be doing some fun stuff with him. And I uh, hope you enjoy the story. Disney Pixar's Coco. Oh, look at this long tongue. <laughs> The dog is so funny. In the small town of Santa Cecilia, there lived a boy named Miguel Rivera. His house was full of family, including his great grandmother, Mama Coco. My neighbor's dog is barking. Every year on Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead, his family shared the memories of relatives who had passed on. Miguel's abuelita would tell the story of his great great grandmother, Mama Imelda whose heart had been broken by her musician husband. Because of him, there was one rule in the Rivera household. No music. <laughs> Sorry, I had to close the window because the dog was barking outside. But of course, Miguel loved music. In his secret hideout, he learned to play guitar by watching videos of his favorite musician, Ernesto de la Cruz. Inspired, Miguel snuck out of the house one night with his dog, Dante, to perform in a local talent show. But on the way out, Dante jumped onto the family ofrenda or altar. Mama Imelda's photo tumbled down with a crash. Oh no. That was when Miguel made a discovery. Mama Imelda's husband was holding a guitar and it looked very familiar. And Mama Coco is saying, Papa. She recognizes her dad in the papa. picture. <laughs> Mama Coco's papa was Ernesto de la Cruz, Miguel cried. I'm going to be a musician. But because of their family rule, his abuelita took his guitar and destroyed it. Smash. Oh, his heart was broken too. Miguel ran as fast as he could to Ernesto's tomb, where the musician's famous guitar still hung. Taking it off the wall, he said, please don't be mad. I need this to be a musician like you. And he gave the guitar, leg the legend's guitar, a strum. Brum. Oh, and something magical happened. Because mm -hmm. on Dia de los Muertos, you're supposed to give offerings to the dead, but he took something, a guitar. All of a sudden, Miguel noticed all the skeletons around him. They had followed the path of marigold petals to visit their living relatives for Dia de los Muertos. To return to the land of the living, Miguel would need a blessing from one of his dead family members. So he and Dante crossed the Marigold Bridge into the land of the dead. Oh my goodness. Oh, no. It's a cool looking place though. Yeah. <laughs> Miguel found Mama Imelda, but she said she wouldn't give him her blessing if he wanted to be a musician. Miguel had to find another way. So he teamed up with a skeleton named Hector, who said he knew Ernesto de la Cruz. With some shoe polish, Hector made Miguel look like a skeleton. They traveled all over looking for Ernesto. They even performed together in a talent show. Do you remember what song they sing? He sang, you make me un poco loco. <laughs> but Miguel was running out of time. If he didn't get Ernesto's blessing soon, he'd turn into a real skeleton and never go home. So he ditched Hector to find his great-great-grandpa on his own. Miguel snuck into Ernesto's fiesta at the tippy top of a tall tower. But the palace was so crowded, he couldn't get to Ernesto. So Miguel belted out a song. Everyone watched as he sang and fell into Ernesto's pool. Splash! The skeleton saw that he was a living boy. Ernesto was overjoyed to meet Miguel. I have a great great grandson! Oh. But then Hector appeared and as the two men argued, Miguel learned the dark truth. 
His great-great-grandpa had poisoned Hector and stolen his songs to become famous. <sighs> Miguel was shocked to see Ernesto's face turn cold. Ernesto explained that he couldn't risk letting the world know the truth. So he threw Miguel and Hector down, down, down into a dark pit. Oh, well, no. look how his hands are turning into skeletons because yeah. his time is running out. <sighs> Hector told Miguel that all the songs he'd written were for his family. And there was a special lullaby, Remember Me. He always sang it for his daughter, Coco. Remember me. Oh, it's such a good song. Miguel thought of Mama Imelda's photo and the unidentified man. It's you. Hector, you are my great-great-grandpa. Aw, that's good because a couple minutes before that, he thought he was related to a murderer. The total upgrade. Suddenly, Mama Imelda and Dante came to their rescue. Oh, man. That's her alebrije, her spirit guide. Her name is Pepita. She's pretty amazing. Pepita. <laughs> but Hector began to disappear. His daughter was starting to forget him. Mama Imelda and Hector sent Miguel home with their blessing. Back in the land of the living, Miguel rushed to Mama Coco. He sang Remember Me to remind her of her papa. Usually she didn't talk very much, so Miguel was thrilled when she actually began to sing along. <sighs> this is the part that makes me happy cry every time. Every time. Sometimes. So cute. Mama Coco kept her papa's memory alive by sharing stories of him with her relatives. At last, the Riveras realized that music could bring them closer together. And now Miguel knew he could follow his dream and become a musician with his family's support. Oh, mm. his family. Mm. I know, right? One of my favorite, favorite uh, movies from Pixar. I don't know, they're all my favorite. Um, so I hope you guys liked it. Such a good story. So now that we're done with the story, let's get on to our craft. We have a little skeleton guy, a sheet of black paper, and some other colorful sheets. You can actually just rip them apart because we don't need to preserve every part of these papers. Um, what you will also need today that you should have gotten in your kit at the beginning of the year is a glue stick. And then you can use, sorry, and also scissors. And then you can use any type of coloring that you want. You have gotten from the school, I believe, a set of markers, uh, a set of colored pencils, and also a box of crayons. So you should have all kinds of different options of different, what's called in the art world, different mediums. Um, so whether it's crayons or markers or colored pencils, um, you can decorate this with different ones. I am going to be using some markers. I'm gonna go with these ones. I have a lot of markers. Kind of a collector of art supplies. Um, but I'm just gonna be using these ones really similar to the ones that you guys have. So. Let's get okay, started. So now we're gonna get started. Let's start with all of our separate pieces and we can start with our scissors. We're gonna practice our cutting and go just around the edge of the body. It almost looks like a person who's getting an x-ray, huh? <laughs> just with the heart and the forehead. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to decorate it up because Sugar School has a lot of different, um, different designs on them. Yeah. All right. So we've got something that you guys might have noticed in the book that um, a lot of the skeletons had in the Land of the Dead is they had like different shapes around their eyes that look like um, hearts and flowers and little swirly marks um so you, we're gonna have a lot of fun doing different designs on here it's gonna be really cool all around get our scissors going like a race car on this race track right hmm. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> oh, careful we're almost at the corkscrew Something I like to do in little corners like this is do like a V. <laughs> you guys might not be going as fast as me, and that's fine. We can always um, pause the video while you finish cutting, or just keep going, and you can watch what I'm doing next so that you'll know when we get done. 
All right, so now we've got our little guy cut out, or girl, you know. Hey. It's um, pretty neutral. You can make it a guy or a girl. Yeah. So now we can start to decorate it. I included a bunch of different colors of paper for you guys in case you wanted to cut out some shapes um, for flowers. So you notice that they had a lot of flowers. I had the flowers on my head too while I was reading to you guys. If you want to take like a pen or a marker or a pencil and draw like a little flower like this, usually they have about five sides. You can do that. You don't have to cut it out with all of the leaves or anything, the petals I mean. But if you want, you can do that and then perhaps just kind of cut around it. I guess we need more light in here. Okay. And you can put these little flowers along the top of your skull. All right, so let's keep cutting these circles around the flowers. If you really want to practice your cutting with a lot of detail, you are more than welcome to try and cut out the petals. I think that is looks just great just like this though. I wonder how many people dressed up like a skeleton for Halloween this year. I've dressed up like um, a skeleton once, but I only put on half my face. Let me tell you, when I went to the school, some of the kids did not like that. They thought it was a little spooky looking. So now I tend to dress up like stuff that is more silly and not scary because I don't really want to scare any children. It's not one of my goals. Nope. Okay, so now mine has four different colors of flowers on the top of her head. And I'm gonna get a pen that's a different color and start to color her. Cause mine's a girl. So I'm gonna color in the heart first. And then something I wanna show you guys that's really cool that I noticed um, on some of the other people that decorated these is they drew flowers inside of the eyes, which I thought looked neat, so I'm gonna try that on mine. So I'm gonna draw a dot here, and I'm gonna go almost like a bicycle wheel. See how I'm drawing like little lines going out? Then I'm just gonna make those lines a little bit bigger. A little bit easy way to make something that looks like a flower. Wow, I like the way that looks. Little dot in the middle. <laughs> that looks kind of funny too. Yeah. I know, I love yours that you did with your claws. It's colorful. Okay, so now <laughs> that looks silly. How many did I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do three, four, five, six, seven. So now I'm gonna do the flower petals on this guy or girl. Okay, you can make it whatever you want. Mm hmm, totally. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to actually fill in the rest of the eyeball with a different color because I'm crazy like that. Forehead, we've got our eyeball sockets <laughs> colored in. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna take another color, it's gonna be green, and I'm gonna start drawing some other details. I'm gonna draw like some dots over the eyes, almost like little dotted eyebrows. Yeah. I'm going to do a couple of swirls, spirals. Another just kind of some wavy lines. I'm gonna do another heart right here. Yeah, the tiny one. And then I'm gonna do another line around the eyes. You guys can do whatever 
little cute doodles you want. Now, some other things you guys can do to personalize this is uh, you did get glitter glue in your box last uh, last week for our um, savings jar project, which I hope you guys liked as well. Um, if you want to do a little bit of glitter glue, you can add some glitter glue on here if your parents or grown-ups are cool with that. Something else you can do is um, you can actually color in all of this space outside of the bones if you want. So it really will look like a skeleton instead of just an x-ray. <laughs> um, or you can even cut out all the bones and glue them on here. There's a lot of different options that you guys have to customize this. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and do some gluing down. I'm gonna get rid of these flowers for a second and glue my guy, girl, person, through them. Do you like my charm? Right I, I do, yeah. It's shiny. So, a little bit of glue goes a long way. Remember, we don't need too much because you're going to just kind of spread it out like this, too. Oh my gosh. She already looks so cute and profesh. She's going to dance, dance away the night for Halloween. So, now I'm going to glue on my flowers her head. Okay. What do you think your favorite song is from Coco from the soundtrack? Because there's a lot of songs on it. Um, I think mine is Twinkle Loco. Twinkle Loco. Twinkle Loco. That's, that seems to be a favorite of a lot of people that I ask. You know, I talk to a lot of people about Coco. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sometimes. Okay, I'm now yeah. also going to get some glitter glue. Also, hot Coco doesn't have which you guys all should have a few of those from your project last week. I think I'm gonna take some yellow glitter glue and add onto my flowers. Just a little, I'm just gonna squeeze too hard, it's gonna just all come out at once. Maybe I need to poke it with pencil. Mm. Come on. you're on camera. Don't embarrass me like that. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. It takes a lot more than that to embarrass me. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Oh, there we go. That one just flowed right out. So I'm going to put some glitter glue on here. If you guys have your glitter glue from last time, your little pens. Um, unless you used them all up, which that's actually pretty cool too. You can add some of that onto here. You should have said that at the beginning of the video. Ooh. In fact, I might put a little bit of it around the skeleton here. Yeah, you can do that too. It's really cool. <laughs> well, you know what I'm going to do on mine? I'm going to take a pink or purpley glitter glue and I'm going to add a heart where the heart is supposed to be. And it's, let's see. So when you cross your heart, <laughs> if you cross your heart for the Pledge of Allegiance, then it goes right here, right? Oh, Newman has a heart. Yeah. I quite love that. Okay, guys, so that's looks like it's about done and it's quite sparkly as you can see. <laughs> I actually really love it and I'm gonna put it up in our little classroom so that we can see it all week. But there they look smart though. I hope you guys had a really fun time doing the craft. I know I Definitely love doing these with you guys. I'd love to see um, a photo if you want to send it to your teacher to pass along to me of how your sugar skull skeletons, say that five times fast, sugar skull skeletons turned out. And I will see you guys soon with the next craft. It's a really good one for the next one. I don't want to brag, but I think it's the coolest one yet. So I'll see you guys soon. Have a great Dia de los Muertos. Bye.